there! In this video, you will learn everything that you need to know about how to etch with your Cricut machine. We will also learn some fun uses of some etched vinyl glass projects. Learning how to etch glass can really open a very wide range of projects that you can do with your Cricut machine and some vinyl. Now, my name is Kelly and I'm coming to you from my crafting den to teach you about Cricut today. I've been using Cricut or similar machines for a few years now and it's my absolute passion to teach you about how to use your machine and how to love all of the projects that you can make with it. So, let's get to it! In this tutorial, we will be using fonts and graphics from Envato Elements. There are so many perfect examples that we can use for so many different projects. And I will show you how to find the right ones for etching glass, as there are a few things that you need to look out for when choosing a design. You may be wondering, what is etching? Etching is the process of permanently frosting the outer layer of your glass. Etching cream is essentially an acid, and when it is applied to a glass item, it eats away at the outer layer, which then leaves a nice frosted look for us. So it is a permanent method of applying your design onto glass. So you'll be able to put these in the dishwasher, you'll be able to soak them, you won't have to worry about the design coming off at all. It will not come off. So when you are working with etching cream, you do need to be careful that you don't get the etching cream on any other part of your design, as it will be there permanently. I also want to talk about what kind of glass that you need to use. You will need to avoid a very specific type of glass, and that is tempered glass. Now this is normally in brands like Pyrex, and essentially what tempered glass means is that it has had a special coating on the outside of the glass or it has been specially treated to be able to withstand heat and cold and it is resistant to scratching. So any types of very high-end glassware typically won't work when it comes to etching. Because of the special treatment that the glass receives, it is resistant to the type of acid that etching uses. So unfortunately you won't be able to use etching cream to etch your design onto this glass. So typically in these cases, I like to use a slightly lower quality item. This is probably one of the only cases that I would say that it's good to use a lower quality item is when it comes to etching. Now, what are the supplies you're going to need to be able to follow along today? Of course, you will need a glass item to etch and you can use a wide range of different glass items. We are going to be using champagne flute glasses in today's video but you can use casserole dishes, wine glasses, shot glasses, tumblers, pretty much any kind of glass that you can find that isn't tempered. You will also need a bottle of etching cream. I recommend to use the Armour Etch brand. I've used some other brands and they haven't been as nice as the Armour Etch in terms of the consistency of the cream. So that means the, some of the other brands that I've used, the cream has been a lot thinner and it has run everywhere. The Armour Etch is a nice kind of thick consistency, so it stays in place a little better. And etching cream really does go a long way. So if you're planning on doing hundreds of etching products, then you should probably go for a bigger bottle. But if you're planning on only doing a few, then the little bottle will be perfectly suited to your needs. I like to use a flat paintbrush to apply my etching cream. I find that it gives me a more even coating and I'm able to move the etching cream around a lot easier. Try and look for a brush that's around one to two centimeters wide or a half an inch to an inch wide. Now you also need gloves. Etching cream, like I mentioned, is an acid. So you will need to make sure that you are protecting your hands. We're also going to be using self-adhesive vinyl in this project. You can use any kind of vinyl. It really doesn't matter. I tend to use my least favorite color vinyl or a vinyl that I know that I've had for a very long time and that has, has essentially expired. The vinyl only needs to stay on the glass for a maximum of 10-20 minutes so we really don't need the adhesive to last all that long. And because we are going to be using vinyl we're going to need some transfer tape. Transfer tape allows us to remove the vinyl from the backing and place it onto the glass surface. If you don't have transfer tape you can use contact paper or even masking tape. 
Now we're going to take a look at Envato Elements to see exactly what we need to look at when we're searching for our design. Now, in Envato Elements, we're going to be looking at two different things. So I'm going to be looking at the graphics as well as the fonts. We're going to choose a font to use and then we're going to choose some graphics to go with it. So I'm going to look at the fonts and there are so many amazing fonts on Envato Elements. So I'm going to choose a nice script font because it is a wedding theme. I want to make sure that it matches the type of project that I'm going to go with. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see there are some categories. What we can do is we can actually select the script and handwritten fonts so that we're not scrolling through many different fonts that aren't suitable for the type of project that we're doing. I like this Hello Sweets font, so I'm going to click on Download. I'm going to add it to a project that is called Wedding, and I'm going to click Add and Download. Then to install the font, I'm going to open up the zip file that downloaded, open the folder. I'm going to use the Open Type font here, and I'm going to double click on it. It then opens quite a big window, so I'm going to click Install and it will have installed the font. Now don't forget that if you have Cricut Design Space already open, you will need to close it and reopen it again. I'm also going to install the Swashes font just to make sure that I've got everything that I need. So I can now close those two and we can start looking for a graphic. So I'm going to the graphics section at the top of the screen. The type of graphics that we're going to be searching for are not going to be your normal images with multiple different colors. We're going to try to look for something that would work well in just two tones. So something that would have black and white as an example. Because with etching, we're not able to do multiple different colors. We're gonna to have to go with a more two-tone kind of effect. So a lot of these images won't be suitable. But what I have done is put together a little wedding collection that you might find useful. And I'll leave the link in the description below. Now, in order to streamline the process of looking for a design, in the search bar, I'm going to type in wedding. And many designs will come up, and you'll see that there are lots of things that you can use that will work beautifully. But as part of the collection that I have put together for you, a wedding graphics collection, so what I'm going to be using today is some of these wedding sticker illustrations. So I'm going to download this one, and again, add it to the wedding project. So for the wedding party graphics, when I open the zip file that it's downloaded, I'm going to extract the PNG files from this bundle because those are the ones that we're going to need. So I'm going to extract them to a location that I know that I'll find in the future. And then we head over to Cricut Design Space to upload them. In a new canvas, we're going to select Upload on the left-hand side of the screen. We're going to click Upload Image. And you can either drag and drop the image here or you can browse for it. Now the images that I'm going to choose for this project are going to be the more simple images. So I'm going to use the ring and maybe one or two of the moustache and bow tie options. Because these ones are flat colours and they will be easier to work with. So I'm going to click on the ring and drag and drop it into Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to select Complex. I'm going to then click continue. Now for the background remover, we're going to need to remove this part of the design, this white section here, so that when your Cricut machine cuts, it cuts around that edge. So what I've just done is I've just clicked on it and we can see that it has been removed. But now before we carry on, we need to preview it to make sure that it has removed the background correctly. So we're going to click on preview and zoom out to check the edges of the picture, and they actually all look very good. So I'm going to click Apply and Continue. If you'd seen a lot of jagged edges here, then what you can do is go to More Options, change the color tolerance to a higher number. The higher the number that is, the fewer jagged edges you will have. And now for the Upload Type. We're not going to be using this for Print and Cut, we're just going to be using it as a cut image, so I'm going to select Cut Image. I'm going to leave the image name as is, and I'm going to leave the description blank. And now we're going to upload the moustache. Now in order to put these images onto our canvas, I'm going to click on both of them so that they're both highlighted in green, and that we can see them down in the bottom right, and click Add to Canvas. Now that we have the designs in Cricut Design Space, we're going to add in some fun text. 
So I'm going to move that out the way. I'm going to click on text on the left hand side. And in order to change the font, I'm going to click on the name on the font name over here at the top. And I'm going to search for the font that we've just installed on the computer. And I'm going to type in hello. So you'll just need a little part of the word. And we can see both the Hello Sweets and the Hello Sweets Swashes font showing up. I'm going to be making Mr. and Mrs. Champagne glasses. So I'm just going to double click on the text and type in Mr. And I'm going to then duplicate that and add on an S at the end. If you are struggling with the sizing and you can see there's a lot of empty space around your text, you can go to alignment and turn the wrap off. Then what it'll do is it'll shrink the box back to the correct size. So we'll do the same for misses as well and zoom out so we can start working with the sizing. Now I'm going to separate these two as I'm going to be working with them separately. But what we need to do for this is we need to create a box around the outside to serve as an overflow area for just in case we get some of the etching cream a little bit further away from the design. So I like to have the box a little bit bigger than normal. So I'm going to click on shapes and I'm going to insert a square. I'm then going to unlock the proportions of the square so that I can make it the right size. I'm going to right click, send it to the back so that we can see the orientation. I think that's giving us more than enough space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click attach. Another method is to slice the elements out of the square, which you can totally do. It'll give you exactly the same end result. Everything within these lines, we will then remove from the vinyl. So I'm going to insert another shape and do the same thing on the Mr. side. Now we have to make sure that the sizing is correct for our champagne glasses. So the glasses that I have is very difficult to see on camera, but it is slightly narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. So we have to make sure that the design is going to be clearly visible on the wine glass. So I take my ruler and I can see that our design shouldn't really be bigger than four centimeters wide for this particular glass. But make sure that you're measuring your particular glass to see roughly how big the design needs to be. So now I'm going to select both of the designs and make them a lot smaller. Zoom in. And you can of course also do this before you add the box to the back as it might be a little easier. So what I'd like to do now is add in a little shape, make the width of that shape four centimeters. And we can see that just by eyeballing it, that is pretty much a good size. I might want to go a tiny bit smaller. Now that we're ready with our size, we're going to go to the top right hand corner and click make it. So I'm going to be cutting this project on smart materials. And what that means is that I'm not using a cutting mat. So on this screen, I'm going to select without a mat. If you were using a cutting mat, if you're using just normal vinyl, then you'll need to select on a mat. But in this case, I'm going to select without a mat and I'm going to click continue. Then I'm going to click continue again to get to the material selection page. And once that is loaded, I'm going to go over to the popular tab because it will show the materials that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to click smart vinyl permanent as that is the material that I will be cutting. And then we can load it all up and get ready to cut. And now we test to see that the vinyl has cut properly. And it has, so we unload the mat and pack away our machine. Now that our vinyl is cut, I'm going to trim it down so that it's easier to work with. And we are now going to weed the vinyl. So that's to remove the excess of the vinyl. So first of all, I start with the outside layer, which is the outside square. And now because we're using a stencil, we're going to remove the bits on the inside. Normally we would remove the outside, but we need the inside to be removed for the etching cream. So I'm going to remove all of the inside bits. Now that that has been weeded, we can take our transfer tape and place it on top of the design. 
I'm going to first use the transfer tape for the Mrs. one. So we take a piece of transfer tape and lay it down over the design that we want to use. Take our scraper and make sure that all of the air bubbles are out and that the vinyl is stuck nicely onto the transfer tape. We rub it from the other side now as well because this is smart vinyl so it's a little bit trickier to get off the backing. Now what we can do is to roll the vinyl, the backing of the vinyl, off the transfer tape and if a little piece like that comes off then you can just roll it back, press it down and it should stay. Now we're going to put this aside into a safe place where it won't stick to anything while we prep the glass. So I have a towel that I like to use to keep the glass in place while I work. So I have the towel like this and I fold the edges over. I then fold it over so that I can manipulate the glass to lie in any direction I want to. So the glass can then lie like that and it'll be a little bit easier for me to work with. Before applying vinyl, I want to clean the glass with an alcohol swab and then wait for it to dry before applying the vinyl. When applying the vinyl, I like to apply it from the back so that I can gauge where it is going to be and I can try and keep it as level as possible. When you're doing it from the front, it's very difficult to see, so I try to do it from the back where I can. So I fold the vinyl in half, hold it in my hand, try and make it curved a little bit in my hand and line it up from the back. Place it in the middle, lay the vinyl down from the middle out, gently pressing it down because we always need to keep in mind the glass is fragile. <laughs> and then we do the other side, making sure to try and push out any air bubbles that may be under the vinyl. You can also take your burnishing tool and try and get the burnish those small areas on because if they lift up then the etching cream will seep underneath it. You will not have a very clean design. Another good option is to look at it from the back and you will see any bubbles that you may have missed and you can more easily push those bubbles out from the vinyl to make sure that your vinyl is all stuck down properly. And I'm now going to remove the transfer tape. Now we can see that we created a few bubbles so I'm just going to go over the vinyl again and make sure that it's all stuck down so that we don't get any etching cream seeping underneath. If I find that my vinyl is being particularly finicky and not wanting to stick all that much, I will leave it to cure for 10 minutes or so as the adhesion, as the adhesive does tend to cure over time. But this one should be good. I think I've got all of the bubbles out of the edges and we should be good to go. So first of all, we put on our gloves and then we take our paintbrush and our etching cream and we open the bottle. Now, like I mentioned, this is an acid, so if you are particularly sensitive to acid type things, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area, that you're using all of the necessary precautions, and that you are aware that this may harm you. So, with that all out the way, I'm going to get out some etching cream, and I'm going to put a light coat of etching cream all over the glass. I always start out with a little bit of a light coat, as this tends to just help me get everything down a little bit easier and get a little bit more of an even itch. Be gentle with it, you can dab it on, don't be too rough. And once you've gotten everything covered, you can start adding more layers of etching cream to have a nice, thick, evenly distributed layer of etching cream all over the entire design. What you do want is to continually move the etching cream around on the glass, as any places that have less etching cream than the other or where you can see through to the glass, may not have quite as good an etch as somewhere that has a big dollop of etching cream on it. So you want to make sure that you're moving it around to evenly distribute and get a nice even etch all over the design. You would do this for a few minutes, I would say around five minutes or so, should be more than sufficient to get a very good etch from. Don't worry about adding too much etching cream. What you can do if you really want to is to spoon some of the etching cream back into the bottle. Make sure to keep an eye on your vinyl while you are etching. That little corner came up again even though it had been lying flat 
perfectly the whole way through. So what I will do is I will very gently put some etching cream right on the edge there and not let etching cream go under. We will have a slight misalignment, but it should be almost imperceptible. Now what I like to do just before I'm going to remove all of the etching cream, so I remove most of the etching cream from one little area and I do a test to see if the etching cream is ready to come off. So I take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and rub away a section of the, of the etching cream, try and clean it up. And then I dry it off to see what the etch looks like. Sometimes you need to scrub the etching cream off a little bit as it kind of dries on the glass and cakes in a little bit. And that looks perfect. So I'm going to scrape off the excess etching cream, put it back into the bottle, and then I'm going to wash the glass under some water, some running water, to remove the excess etching cream. Like I mentioned, it does dry a little bit on, so you may need to scrub it a little bit to get it off. Now that it has been cleaned and dried, we can remove the vinyl. and see what damage the vinyl lifting has done, if at all. Now, because I noticed that lifting very early, I actually managed to save it. It's not 100% perfect, it's probably 99.9% .9 perfect. And if we zoom in quite far, then we'll be able to see the edge. Very often when it comes to seeing your etch in person, it obviously looks a lot better. And when you photograph it, I always recommend to put black paper behind it because it tends to stand out the best. So when you're photographing things, you can use some black paper. But that etch is perfect. It is a very even etch. It's a nice deep etch. And we even managed to save that little corner there. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel for more cricket content in the future. I'll see you in my next video and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon. Mm -hmm.